I think you've answered it in the sense that you've answered the the, the idea that, that it's something that's very deep. It runs very deep and it's very persistent. So that when that a, a situation arises where as, as they tend to reoccur until we can really see what's going on, that whenever a situation arises where I want it to be different, then I want it to be different than it is, then to just remember, to bring it back and remember that, that it's, my, it's a perceptual problem. When that was going on, I remember thinking that, you know, that it, it could be a great opportunity for um, experiencing something other than that and feeling like it would be so helpful to, to have some experiences of being in an environment where externally it seemed active and noisy and, and uh, not what I have considered conducive to maintaining a still mind. Mm -hmm. you know, um, because I can say that, you know, that, that there, sh there, there is a way to be at peace regardless, but without having experientially known what that feels like, it's just talking about it. Mm -hmm. So if we take that idea that you've just mentioned of, of experiential versus talking about, and we bring it back to our holy encounter, our, our coming together right now, you know, what are there unresolved um, problems or situations or um, uncomfortable thoughts that you can get in touch with that um, kind of like a free association kind of thing. Right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you want me to just kind of just spew out what, what my thoughts are right now? Mm-hmm. Even if it doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, you know, I, I have the thought and, and some consciousness of of, uh, of taping this mm -hmm. and uh, wanting to just completely ignore it and just be here in dialogue with you as, as we've often been when we mm -hmm. weren't taping it mm -hmm. and just let it flow and not be self-conscious. I guess I'm feeling self-conscious. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe we can go into that, explore a bit. I mean, self-conscious, you're feeling, um, maybe you, you feel a sense of uneasiness or something with the, the recorder going. If you go into that, what, what is the uneasiness about? Um, usually when we're just discussing and dialoguing, um, I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking about the thoughts in a sense. I'm thinking about only, you know, what we're talking about feels like. So I'm sure there's distraction, but it's like I feel like I'm able to really give my attention to that. Um, and I notice that with the microphone set up and so forth that I'm not nearly as attentive and only attentive to of what we're saying to each other. So if we bring that back to the subject-object split that we're talking about, it does come back to the belief that I'm a person, you're a person, 
Um, and we have had these dialogues or discussions in the past that seemed a certain way, you know, seemed to be very attention-focused and so on and so forth. And then somehow the microphones or the recording equipment is, is making something different. In my mind. In your mind. Not that, it, not that that's doing it, but obviously there's some, something going on in my mind that I would think that it's different. Mm-hmm. It, can, it can get down to this thing about um, recording or videotaping or um, even the belief that um, it would be different if there was a, a third person here that the dynamics would change, you know, that there are different dynamics with three people speaking than there are with the two of us speaking. You know, there's just so many subtle ways in which the subject-object split can manifest itself in the sense that those are beliefs. You know, you really believe that it's different than it was or that, that there's a different factor mm -hmm. added on now, so to speak. And in, in believing in that factor, then their attention, the attention gets focused on it, or sometimes distracted on it, and away from it, away from the, just that intention to come and to cut through things. Anything else that you feel like when you feel self-conscious about that? Is it um, a sense of something that you you feel a sense of censorship to what you say when it's um, on tape as opposed to when it's not on tape? Maybe I'm just more aware of it. That um, it could be helpful if I was as clear as possible in my speaking. Yeah, so I guess I am, you know, trying to be more attentive and perhaps censoring what I say and how I say it. Yeah, but perhaps it would be helpful if we kind of reframe the whole thing then in the terms of. Uh, as an exploration, you know, as a, a sense of our words that we speak are helpful to us in this cutting through the deceptions and distortions and getting in touch with what we believe in. You know, so often beliefs are unconscious. We don't, um, aren't consciously aware of, of everything that we believe. It's kind of like beliefs have been built up. There's a belief system um, in operation, and there's a lot of assumptions and premises that are tied into that, and if we use this dialogue as an exploration of that, it's even something that you can go back and and hear yourself, or the technique of like someone looking in the mirror, mm -hmm. and for instance, noticing how tired their eyes look, or or how they they look that they weren't aware of, can can help bring an awareness to to something that's going on or something that's much deeper. In that sense, this is not a taping session for someone else, but it's, it's for me. You know, it's just another tool that I can use. I mean, I notice that it feels different to me if I think that I'm the only one who's going to hear this tape than if I think, you know, this is going to, something that's going to be, you know, shared with other people. Mm -hmm. That's a good point because that really gets into the subject-object split and it gets into the, the self-concept. You know, it's, it's, it's saying that there is a world outside of me, mm -hmm. outside my mind, um, that's apart from the personhood of who I am and that my identity is very wrapped up and tied up 
in that in, in that environment in those other people that I call friends or um, acquaintances and so on and so forth and that other people may hear this you know what the, the thought the self-conscious thought is you know what will they think mm -hmm. of me you know what what are my words accurate? It's almost like trying to live up to a standard or put on a front, you know, to be a certain way, whether it's a spiritual front or it's a it's just a, an image of myself that I feel um, I want people how I want people to see me and everything, and that needs to be questioned as well. I think all my editing stuff kicks in, you know, and I think, um, you know, that, that there are ways of saying things that are much more helpful and much clearer than other ways. And so it's like, I think I'm mentally editing myself as I speak, thinking that if I do that, it would perhaps be clearer and more helpful and so forth. Mm -hmm. There's a strain in um, uh, observing words and observing behavior. Uh, the whole point of, of our discussions is to, to bring it back to the mind and to to get in touch with with thinking that um, appears to be backwards or reversed um, or distorted, fear-based thinking, and that a sense of relaxation in the sense of it, it's, it's not so important what these behaviors are in these words, but to really have a connection of minds, to really start to look at the ideas and everything, and that's what we're, we're doing. That subject-object split is, is runs very deep, and it, it covers so many things, and to just to start to see that, to see that I'm objectifying the recording equipment, or I'm objecti objectifying this situation. So when you say objectify, you just mean that I'm making it apart from myself, right? Other than myself, right? As soon as that happens, as soon as there's a subject and an object, then, then of course the mind has to has, in a sense, made up a reason to be afraid. It it, it has to protect the small me or the self that I see as apart from the world and it sees the world as um, infringing on it and encroaching upon it and um, in a sense weakening it for instance with the tape perhaps you know being shared but to someone else and someone else you know making comments on or judgments or so on and so forth you know, if there is a, uh, a fear of that um, happening, there that just is a, um, in a sense, a demonstration of that subject-object split. As soon as I believe that there's something outside of me, then I have to immediately click into an awareness of that, awareness of that yeah. and, and the defensiveness to to protect this small self that's apart from, from everything else. So how do I look at that or what attitude do I, I have to to have it, to, to not objectify? Well, it's, it's the intention. Um, it takes a willingness to step back in the mind and to start to even begin to grasp that, that everything that I perceive with these eyes and hear with these ears and smell and taste and touch and so forth is are simply thoughts in my own mind. False thoughts. Yes, unreal thoughts. Unreal thoughts. Thoughts that um, are not eternal and are not changeless and are not infinite.